brought up here is that there would be a plan of action because there is a need for political action at this at this time. And I don't think that with workshops and everything we can plan political action. I mean, the workshops serve their purpose, but the plan of political action. I think we should be on the streets and manifesting our frustration, demonstrating our frustration with the present situation as quickly as possible. I don't think that there is much time to waste because the disasters are happening right today on our streets and in our community. We've gathered here today from student, labor, and community organizations across the province to advance a very basic premise. That Ontario should be a province that's built upon tenets of fairness, equity, and justice. A place where strong public services support the strongest and the most vulnerable among us. A place where all Ontarians enjoy the rights to an education, childcare, healthcare, housing, and a good, stable job. But for decades, this vision of our province has been systematically dismantled by successive governments, pressured by corporate interests to privatize public life and create a marketplace where everything has a sticker price. A raucous house party for the wealthy and powerful, almost half a decade long, has eroded a social contract that saw the broad expansion of public services, universal health care and education, legislation of workers' rights, and the steady creation of decent, stable jobs. Today, we're enduring a hangover for a party we were never even invited to. Economic growth has proven both undesirable and unsustainable. Increasingly erratic weather demonstrates the damage we've done to our ecosystem may very well be irreversible. Banks and corporations sit on billions of dollars awarded to them through tax cuts, while the only sector that sees job growth is part-time, precarious service jobs that have no protections, low wages, and no job security. As a young person, as a student, I know that my generation will feel the brunt of these problems. We've watched as cynical pundits and opportunist politicians, those who enjoyed strong social services and guarantees of stability and happiness, gambled away our future through reckless tax cuts, ideological crusades against public servants, and an almost comical denial that the tired free market ideas of the past are dysfunctional and completely out of touch with the lived reality of everyone in this room. We've watched the idea of democracy and the institution of government, once lauded as tools with which to organize our daily lives, become mocked and debased as obstacles to organizing our daily lives. Gone are the days of big ideas in politics. Now we can only choose between candidates whose biggest difference is the rate at which they will cut taxes and spending. I live in a city where public transit is given a tiny budget and the line is slow and unreliable. Go figures. A province where colleges and universities are chronically underfunded and mocked as wasteful. A country where government places insurmountable obstacles in front of workplace organizing only to condemn unions as ineffective. The goal of these policies is to create a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you undermine the work of government, then government becomes unworkable. The great irony of all this is that the most ardent critics of the usefulness of government are those who sit in legislatures every single day. It's a grim picture of a province, a country, a world that's on the edge of crisis. But it doesn't have to be this way. As a young person, I also have the idealism and the energy to believe, to know, that just because the idea of a fair, just, and equitable Ontario is a little distant, doesn't mean that that gap is unbridgeable. But we cannot safely cross turbulent waters below by making piecemeal repairs to an old and decaying bridge. It's time for us to build a new bridge together. Social democracy in the post-war form as we know it today might be gone forever, but in the year 2013, a new kind of social democracy is not only possible, it is more necessary than it has ever been. History and circumstance will change, but ideas are fixed, concrete, and eternal. Just because we witnessed the wholesale gutting of good full-time jobs doesn't mean that we have to give up the fight for good full-time jobs. Our mission, if we choose to accept it, <laughs> is to beat corporate interests at their own game. If they insist on the mass expansion of service sector jobs, then let's fight to make those jobs good jobs. Jobs that have living wages and benefits to create. 
they insist on characterizing higher education as an investment in economic growth, then we will say, what better investment can a society make than abolishing tuition fees and creating a highly educated workforce? <laughs> the working poor and new immigrants, those who rely on social services to survive on little or no income, we will fight to say that strong social services are the only way to decrease reliance on social services. It's time to bring back big ideas to this province, and I know we can do it. The only way to do that is to build a strong, diverse, and united movement of students, workers, and community members to rebuild social democracy for the 21st century. We need not no look nostalgically to the past, nor enviously to the present in other places. There's only one place that we need to look, here and now. In this room alone, we have the energy, the diversity, and the determination to win this fight. So let us regard today as the beginning of Ontario's next golden age of fairness and justice. After all, it only takes a spark to light a fire, and the fire this time, they won't be able to put out. Thank you very much. The Canadian Student Federation. Thank you everyone for coming. All of you have this document in your kids. It's called Social Movements and the Defeat of Neoliberalism. That's our paper that we're going to be discussing today. It's going to be the basis of our agenda, people's agenda. It is, we have received feedback from many, from many organizations, uh, Freedom 90, uh, Color of Poverty, the Canadian Federation of Students. So this is our document, and this is hopefully will become our people's agenda, our manifesto for action. And we're here to hear from you. There's to dream that we, we envision a new, a new society, a new Ontario. A new, a new Canada and a new world which is possible and necessary, as Alice said. So the idea is that we receive feedback from you. This is a living document, similar to the falling behind paper. This is the document that will guide our action with your feedback. And feel free to provide us with feedback uh, today on an on ongoing basis. So the purpose of the document, it's stated there, it says, Understanding neoliberalism in Ontario, reviewing local and international social movements and drawing out lessons from those movements, exploring the Ontario Common Front as a vehicle for a province wide movement with a potential to lead to system transformation. And based on what has been said, we have been learning, we have to, to build on the social movements, occupy the student strike in Quebec. I don't know more. Those are bright movements, vibrant movements that we have to support. In terms of lessons learned, we have learned that there has been a long, it has to be a long-term commitment. Engaging people with background, variety of backgrounds and experiences, having a strong message, connecting the local struggle with the, with, with the big picture, embracing creativity, in creating this space for people. This is our democratic space for everyone. This is, this is our time. This is the moment to build. This is the moment to transform our, our society. It's possible to do it. Other people have been doing it. Our great leader, Hugo Chavez, articulated for us ALBA, the, the Latin American Alliance for the Americas. And they can be, they've been telling us it is possible. We can do it. The paper will continue to discuss at the workshop for social movements. So thank you so much, and let's make this it's a living document and our manifest so for change. It is my pleasure and privilege to be introducing to you our uh, speakers this morning. And um, you will see, and if you look on your sheet, uh, you will see that our speakers are going to be addressing uh, questions under the main theme headings. And of course, we're all about building movement today, so they will be talking about how we build movement, how we form effective community labor alliances, articulating alternatives, and also the very important engagement and outreach piece, how we, again, how we build our movement. 
Um, so without further ado, and welcome to all of our speakers. Um, they all have, I think, really important and, and uh, diverse things to say. Um, and so I would like to first of all welcome Melissa Elliott. She co-founded the Young Ongwe Hongwe United, a youth movement that has been campaigning for a youth center, a youth voice, and healing in their community. Melissa is a strong advocate for Six Nations sovereignty and a nation-to-nation -nation relationship between Six Nations and Canada based on the two-row Wampum Treaty. She is currently going to school for Mohawk language and fighting against the Enbridge Line 9 project. And Melissa, welcome to
and um, there's all of our chiefs and clan mothers and all of our people, like we have communities in Oneida, Wisconsin, and Akwesasne, and Ganawage, and in the states, in Oneida, New York, or, or Onondaga, New York, and Tuscarora, New York, and from all over, they're all in Oneida, London right now, reciting the great law, telling the story of the peacemaker, and it's a historic thing right now. But I just wanted to, I just wanted to share that because that is in part of the movement bringing back our uniting our people. So anyway, um, so when we talk about movement building, the first thing I thought of, and this is what happened from that I don't know more uh, meeting, we when we came to that meeting, we were taught to talk about envisioning. What is our envisioning for this movement that we have? And um, what do we like to see for it? And we all had different ideas for the vision for the future. And um, for me, I like to look at that Turo Wampum. And that Turo Wampum, it, most people when they look at that, and I don't know how many educated people are here, a lot of people know what that is, that deal with our people, but um, the Turo Wampum is um, when we do treaties our people with other, um, when we did treaties with the British or um, other nations, we would do it in wampum, which is um, like shell, and um, we wouldn't do it in paper, and because um, it lasts forever. And the two row is just like two lines parallel, right? And um, the, but the two row wampum doesn't just represent the treaty that we have with Canada or with the British. Um, it also represents many things. That also the relationship between men and women, that um, and different energies, how they're connected, and. Um, when I see the two or one from I also see about organizing. There's two different aspects to it um, when we were talking at this I don't know one meeting. And there's the um, the feminine and the masculine energies that we have. And I was talking with one of the elders about it. What two things that we have to do with our people. There's the nation building that we have to do. And then there's the fighting the the struggle that we have to have with Canada and with these companies and with the external the external issues that we have to deal with to survive. But in order to survive also, we need this nation building because we have many things that are going on in our communities right now. And um, all at once, everything's happening all at once, really. Um, on Six Nations, for example, um, myself, like when I started getting involved with things, I was about 13 years old. And um, I, I started getting involved with the youth. And I'm still young, I'm about 23, but um, the youth issues uh, have really intensified. We've had a, a lot of youth suicides in our community. And um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of youth suicides and um, a lot of uh, um, drugs and alcohol issues and all of those things that are internal to our community. And those things, when you talk about austere, austerity and stuff like that, and cutting of um, cutting of social services and all that stuff, I understand what you mean by that. But when we talk about nation building of our people, we talk about becoming sovereign, so that we can heal our people ourselves. And that healing that needs to come from the the residential schools and what's happened to our people is extremely important. Because what that did, those residential schools, it, it really broke. And when some people say it broke the sacred hoop, it broke uh, a lot of our communities. And so those are the nation building things that we have to do to strengthen our women, strengthen our communities. And um, those are some of the things like learning our language, doing our ceremonies. But that's also connected to what's going on on the external, which is this land issue. Now, this is happening at an extreme rate, and our people are, are like, it's happening so quickly. Now, on Six Nations, we have this small piece of land, and it is completely surrounded by all of these, like, towns, and it's being enclosed on, enclosed on, enclosed on, by um, the surrounding towns and development. There's development happening all over the place. We can't even keep up with it. And, um, you know, there's only so much of us, too. And um, 
you know, that 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 is happening in every all of these different communities that I speak about. And um, that that was what the, when we came together for I don't know more. That's what all of these communities brought to the table. Like in BC, um, where the Unstoden camp is, they're blocking the, um, the the pipeline for the oil sands out there, and um, you know they physically had to go out there and block it because these are the these things that are going on. These companies are going out there and they're destroying our livelihood because we can't heal. And we can't be who we are without that land. And I don't. I think it's kind of hard for people to understand those ideas and those concepts um, when they're living here in the city. When you guys live your lives and you don't live on the land, because for our people, the six, like our Haudenosaunee people, we have our ceremonies all year round, and our ceremonies are tied to the land. We have strawberry ceremony. We have green corn ceremony, we have green bean ceremony, we have, um, sorry, we have one minute left. Um, I, um, I'm sorry, I took up a lot of time, but, uh, and I didn't even get to talk about line nine, but <laughs> line nine is um, another thing that is coming up and this is happening right now in Toronto. And line nine is coming from the, the tar sands the tar sands everyone should know about is the dirtiest oil that there is out there. And it's in Canada, and it is like destroying the indigenous people's communities there. And my friends live out in Fort McMurray, and it's poisoning the people out there. And it, they're bringing it through Toronto, they're bringing it through my territory, they're bringing it through about 18 indigenous communities, 100 towns, it's nine million people along nine line, line nine, and this is a pipeline, a thirty-year-old pipeline. It already exists, and they're taking tar sands oil and putting it through here. And it's very similar. It's basically a twin of the Kalamazoo um, pipeline that is that leaked in um, the U.S. and the worst oil spill that ever happened in U.S. history, and that's going to be going through this area. And so this is your issue as well. And we're fighting it as Wahoni Indigenous people, and there are people here in Toronto that are fighting it as well. And I think that a lot of people are supporting anti-tar sands. And I know there's a conflict around jobs, but I want to say, I want to address that because there is a huge, I'm gonna I'm say, I know we only have a minute left, but I want to address that, that there is a conflict between our people and unions along uh, sometimes because there's the job issue, and then there's our issues behind the environment. And what I have to say to that is that I think that we can all come to terms that we are supposed to be allies to each other, and we're supposed to support each other. And um, I think a lot of that comes with communication. And we don't, it's not each other that we're fighting, it's the system. And um, with Line 9 particularly, there is like no jobs, it's crazy, literally. And this is a no-brainer. Um, people want to support anti-tar sand stuff, then don't let Line 9 happen through your community. This is a real way to stop the tar sands. And it is happening in your community. So please don't, like, please be anti-tar sands and against Line 9. There was a couple of dates that I wanted to share with you, and I'll do it really quickly. Um, and the, um, from the October 12th to the 20th, James and I is gonna visit Canada. And in 2005, the UN um, questioned basically Canada, saying, uh, what are you doing about indigenous um, people's self-determination rights? And um, he's coming back, James and I, to Canada. And we're asking them to monitor uh, Canada for human, their human rights issues. And he's coming back to the 12th to the 20th, and we're wanting um, him to monitor Canada for the United Nations for their human rights abuses towards Indigenous issues. Also, um, on October 7th we're gonna, is the anniversary of the Royal Proclamation, 
and we're going to be doing a huge day of action for that across Canada. The Idol Memorial is going to be doing a huge day of action, and so we're asking for your support for Indigenous people, for your students, for your workers. This is going to be a huge day of action um, for the 250th anniversary of the Royal Proclamation. On August 24th, the Indigenous Action Alliance, it was solidarity with people in the tar stands in the Unistodan camp, is going to be doing a day of action. This is on the 24th. And, and um, on the 25th, uh, there's going to be a demo here in, um, in, Brand Air, sorry, in Toronto uh, for its support of Grass and Narrows um, against the mercury lobbying that's happening in Grass and Narrows. Um, it's going to be at Christie's Pit Park, and it's a demo against Kathleen Wines, the Ontario Premier. So uh, if, you got, if you guys want more information, there's real solid ways to support and with more Indigenous people and just get a hold of me because this is all of our, like, if you guys are talking about all of your issues, you all live in this land, and we're fighting for this land. Our people are on the front lines every day. The front lines, they're getting arrested, they're... <laughs> There are, I can't explain to you, our people are dying for this land and for the water, for the earth, for all of this. While we're sitting in this room, they're standing up on the front lines in BC, in New Brunswick, up north. So keep that in mind. While we're sitting here, people are saying, are my people are standing on the front lines for this environment. While all this stuff is gone, that's what's going to exist, is this earth. And so we, that's what we need to keep in mind. And that's what unites us all, is this earth that we live on, um, across all barriers. So I'm now for allowing me to be here, and I'm sorry for <laughs> going over time, but I just wanted to share that with you. And I know we can unite under this two row. We can unite through peace, respect, and friendship. And we can cut across these boards and come together. So I hope we see you in the future, and y'all